Okay, we're gonna go live. Uh, one second. We're live, we're live, we're live. Yeah, we are live. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. I got nobody on yet. Nobody. Wow, 25, 30 seconds? All right. Um, how's everybody doing this morning? Hello, Melissa Lewis. How are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, today I want to talk about calories, studies, all this stuff. Spivey, taking a break from your friend or what? What's going on? Why are you, uh, why are you on live? Why are you on here? Um, um, I mentioned to a certain YouTuber during their live that the calorie restriction theory um, is kind of um, stupid. It, it's basically, I asked them what they thought. I didn't, I don't think I, I said it was stupid, but I said something similar to that. And they go, oh, it's not a theory. Everything in science is a theory. There is nothing that's 100% proven. So everything is a theory. Everything is an idea. Um, they could try and do studies, which is why we have so many different studies. My gosh, we have, we have uh, different studies like, like you wouldn't believe. We have um, uh, what observational studies. We have random, randomized control studies. We have meta-analysis studies. We have systematic review, um, case control studies, animal research studies. There's, there's so many different studies out there that um, if, if something was, was not a theory, or, there, there isn't anything that isn't a theory. Everything is a theory. So I kind of got offended when they kind of laughed it off and they said, no, calorie counting is not a theory. And it, and it is. The problem with calorie counting is this. This is why I tell you guys, in, in my group and, in, and on my YouTube channel, I say, don't worry about the calories. Stop trying to reduce your calorie, your calories. All right, and the reason I say that is because it's it's failed. It's a failed it's a failed way of losing weight, because all you're going to be thinking about is, oh my gosh, I'm eating too many calories. I'm eating way too many calories. I shouldn't be eating this many calories. I've got to reduce that. And that's not the way the ketogenic diet works. It's not the way the low fat high or the high fat low carb diet works. It's not the way the paleo diet works. It's not the way any of these good diets will work. The only ones that are going to work like that. And they'll work for probably about six months is, a, is basically like the standard American diet or, or like the biggest loser diet or something like that. And the problem with that is that when you reduce your calories, you're going to have to continue to reduce your calories to continue to see results. And the more you continue to cut these calories, the more crappy you're going to feel. Okay, you're not you're going to you're going to get less out of every day than you are now. Um, they, they did a study on those biggest losers. And what they did was there's this thing called an RMR, which is the resting metabolic rate. And it's basically the amount of calories you're burning without having to do the exercise. So uh, they did the study on this in the one year and one guy showed he's, he burns about 3,500 calories by just sitting there. So by the end of the thing, by the end of the, the biggest loser contest, he was down to 1,700 calories. So on the average for those biggest losers, they reduced their naturally burning calories by 700 calories a day. So that means they're burning 700 calories less naturally than they were before they started. And what happens is, is over 30 weeks and over, you know, over a longer period of time, that actually keeps continuing to reduce. And that's why when you start to do a diet and you reduce your calories, am I stuck? I look stuck. Why am I stuck? Is anybody out there? Let me see. Can you guys see me? Hello? Let me see something here. 
I look stuck. Hmm. Am I stuck, Melissa? Do I look stuck? I look frozen, right? I look frozen. Why is this? Frozen picture. Yeah. All right. Let me... Why is that? Ugh. Hold on. Let me see if I could fix it. Uh, ugh. Guess it doesn't matter now. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Am I unfrozen yet? Am I unfrozen? Uh, hold on. Take a note here. How about now? Is the picture back? My back? Um, it's because I removed my comment about cheesecake. I didn't even get to see that comment. I wish I would have seen, seen it. All right. All right. Good now. Good. So, as I was saying, um, good, good, thanks, um, is the more you reduce your calories, the more you're going to have to continue to reduce your calories to see results. And the problem is, is you're going to get to a point where you're only burning off about 1,400 calories and you're still, maybe you're eating only 1,500 calories, which is very low, and you're not feeling good, you're feeling lethargic, you're feeling like crap, and now you're starting to gain the weight back, and that's what's gonna happen. And the problem is, is then you start to eat more because you wanna feel better, thank you, thank you, um, and you start to eat a little bit more, say now you're eating 2,000 calories. That's not a lot of calories. It's not really, you're not really going hog wild, but now you're only burning 1,400 calories, which means you're gaining 600 calories in a day, and over, you know, over a week, that's that's almost like two pounds of weight you're gaining every week, and that's not that's not that's not good. So, um, I, I saw it I saw it designed like this. This is how it, this is how it's the best way to understand this. All right, and I saw it explained this way, and I thought it was just an amazing example. It's basically like this: your body has ways of storing food. Okay, you eat your food. You eat your calories, and the body stores it in basically like a refrigerator, okay? But it also has a freezer. Now, the refrigerator is easy to get at, easy to store food. That's your liver, all right? So you store some, some of your foods and your fats in your liver, your glycogen or whatever, your ketones, and you're able to then use those very easily. Now, the problem here is that when you have a higher insulin, when you become more insulin resistant, say you eat, you eat carbohydrates or something like that, or your insulin spikes a little bit, what happens is some of that energy now gets put into your freezer, which we all know that the freezer is a harder place to get to. We always don't like to go down to the basement and get the food out of the fridge, um, but when your insulin is even higher, what happens is, is that it's even harder to get to that freezer because now it has like a big bar over it. It's all locked up. It's down in the basement. It, it's stored away. So um, if we didn't have the insulin blocking us from utilizing that energy from the freezer, everything would be easy and great. And you know, you would basically just say, okay, if I eat 2,500 calories today, I'll just burn off 2,500 calories. Yeah. In a perfect world, that would be great. But say you only eat 2,000 calories. Yeah, I'm only burn, bur burning off all those 2,000 2, calories. Or what if I ate 3,000 calories and now I'm only burning off 2,000 calories. So now I have 1,000 calories of problem. So where's that going to go? Well, the problem is, is that those excessive calories tend to go towards fat. All right. Now, so the whole idea and the thinking behind, oh, I should just reduce my calories has some sort of um, logic to it, but it doesn't. But it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. Hey, Ghost, how are you? Um, it just doesn't work because insulin blocks you from using it. So here's what calorie restriction does. Since it's so easy to retrieve energy from the liver, what happens is, is as you start to reduce your your calorie intake, all your liver does is then reduces the calories going out. So you're not going to benefit 
from reducing your calorie restriction. For people to say that it's only about calories, it's about, and they go, oh yeah, hormones have something to do with it. Hormones have everything to do with your weight gain and your weight loss. And it's just the way it works. Um, if, if the hormone is there, the insulin, you're storing fat. If the insulin is low, you're not storing fat, okay? You're just not. For people to think that you will store fat regardless of if, if your insulin is high or low, that's not science, okay? The way the science works, if insulin is high, you are gonna store those extra calories, that extra food you eat as fat. And then they think that, oh, well, you just can't overeat. Well, on the ketogenic diet, you, don't, you, don't, you tend not to overeat because what happens is, is carbohydrates are non-existent. And carbohydrates are what usually block the brain, for, uh, the leptids from telling the brain that you're full. So you tend not to overeat. So the idea that the ketogenic diet is just some sort of uh, crazy diet that you could just go and eat all crazy amounts is absurd because when you do the ketogenic diet, your appetite goes down. And a lot of you guys know this because you've already started a lot of this ketogenic diet and you realize that it's really hard to continue to eat and eat and eat if you're doing the ketogenic diet, right? And, you're, and the fat gets you to satiety and you, feel, and you feel good. But people that are on a carbohydrate diet don't understand that because they don't have that satiety. They don't get that, they don't get that full feeling until they've like eaten everything on their plate eating everything off their wife's plate or their, their husband's plate. They, they just tend to keep eating and eating and eating and they think, oh, well, that's what you're gonna do on the ketogenic diet and that's not true. You tend to eat less on the ketogenic diet naturally, okay? And what happens is you stop getting fat stored. Now, I also had that, some people tell me say, well, if, uh, if you try to redo, if you try to uh, uh, like fast, Fasting is, is something that is, is pretty well known in the ketogenic diet. They say, well, if you fast, you're just going to end up burning muscle. It doesn't make sense. Okay, the body wasn't built to store fat for energy. And when the chips are down, you just, and, and you need that energy because now you're fasting. It doesn't just go and start utilizing muscle to, for energy, it'll go to that fat storage and you will start utilizing that fat during a fast. That's why intermittent fasting or long-term fasting tend to work well with the ketogenic diet because what you've done is you've reduced your appetite, you've reduced your amount of fat storage, and now you're, you're implementing the utilization of that fat that you have in that freezer. So now you're pulling all that fat away from the freezer and you're helping yourself to now produce more, more calories out. So that's gonna help with your metabolism. Everybody understands that if you reduce your calories, your metabolism starts to slow down. We all know that. And, and for some people to continue to tell you that the reason you're not losing weight is because you're just not good at following diets is, is nonsense. I was one of those people. I was a personal trainer for many, many years. And I would tell people, follow this diet that I'm telling you about. Now, the diet that I pushed was kind of a keto. Uh, I didn't realize it then because I didn't understand keto back then. I was just more about, um, you know, exercise more, eat less, da 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 da, da. I didn't realize that, that eating a ketogenic diet or eating a high fat, which I recommended a little bit. I told them to eat extra, you know, to consume extra virgin olive oil, to consume MCT oil. And, and I was kind of ahead of my own time, I guess. Shh, shh, Bernie, I can't even think. Okay, all right, he's gonna start up. Shh. All right, buddy. Yeah, I hear Bernie too. Bernie, Bernie, stop. He doesn't listen. He's not like a dog or anything. That's the problem. Hey, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> he likes to steal the show. 
Anyway, um, and, and he'll start back up. There he goes again. Uh, now, and the reason you guys didn't hear this bird before is because the cage was upstairs in a spare bedroom. Um, I decided to redo that spare bedroom. I didn't like having the birds just in there and they would only see us when we walked by the room or when we went in to visit them. What I decided to do was put the bird cage down here um, where everybody is. Yeah. He is the music, he is the background music, yeah. He, he's, uh, yeah, he's my backup vocals. So anyway, um, he actually has a girlfriend and he's trying to talk to her this is what he's trying to do now. So anyway, all right, um, gosh, where was I? Uh, oh, it was about the, uh, the storing of the fat and the utilization of fat. Um, when you fast, you are utilizing fat. It's just the way it works. You are utilizing fat. Don't be afraid to do intermittent fasting. And when you start the ketogenic diet, it's not something you want to do right away. You don't want to do your intermittent fasting right away because your body's not ready for it. Your body is still thinking about carbohydrates. It's still trying to break down um, foods that you eat for glycogen and glucose and stuff like that. And um, it's, it's not ready to, to only dip into your fat storage. It's, it's going to try to create glycogen um, because it's, it's, it's scared. And you, you want to wait until you're fat adapted, which usually takes probably about four to six weeks of eating very, very clean ketogenic diet, which is a high fat, low carb diet. To also think that you have to utilize this fat lever, um, that's just old nonsense trying to get in the way of you doing the ketogenic diet properly. They're trying to tell you, oh, reduce your fat down and you'll use your own body fat. It's no, no. Keep your fats high. Keep keep the fats high. Um, keep keep um, keep your carbohydrates low. Keep your proteins at a moderate level. Uh, the problem with people thinking that, like the old Atkins, is that you thought you could just eat as much protein as you wanted, and it was a high protein diet. And of course, that does do a little harm to your kidneys it is it is rough but here's the thing is that when when you eat proteins it gets broken down in your di in your digestive system in your stomach and it starts to go down into your small intestines and that's where it slows down so if you start to try to push more proteins in the body can't utilize them and it tends to go towards a fat source okay or it tends to go towards fat or it gets broken down in, into a sugar, stuff like that. And that's, the, that's why I tell people to do a moderate protein. Don't get your proteins up too high. Hello, everybody. Hey, trucker. Hey, guys. Redeem is here. I saw that. Um, I, I just decided I, I was just seeing a lot of things today. Uh, I was, I was uh, listening to Nancy on her uh, Facebook group, and I was listening to um, uh, Jimmy Moore, on her Facebook group as well. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm gonna go off on a tangent real quick and I think this needs to be addressed. Um, I don't think Jimmy Moore is a sellout. That's ridiculous. Okay, Jimmy Moore is a very helpful person. Um, he's a very nice guy. He's very knowledgeable. Jimmy Moore is one of the pioneers of the ketogenic diet. He came out with many, many books, okay, to help people. Of course, he's making money at that. And for people to think that, that the product that he found, and he's not making money off of this, he might make a little bit, but for God's sakes, the guy's fine way he is. Um, there are products out there that are keto friendly, and why not tell people about them? That's all he's doing. That, that, that article that I, I I, he's posted on on our Facebook group. I'm 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 proud that he posted on my Facebook group. This guy has he's done more for keto than anybody I know. So uh, you know, and for him to have to come onto our page and defend himself and 
to feel like he can't even post anything on our page because of all the insults that he got, that was kind of embarrassing. And unfortunately, a lot of the people, um, he, had, he does have a good heart. And, and if you knew the guy, instead of just going, oh, you're just a sellout, you're just selling product, oh, you're, you're, you're doing this, I was totally embarrassed. I was, it upset me. Um, and I guess Nancy got really upset too when they did it on her group. I went and did all the research on that product and I'll tell you what, that product is pretty freaking sound, all right? For people to think that corn soluble fiber is some, something that's bad for you, that's wrong, it's not. There is no study that shows that it's wrong or bad or anything like that, it's just fiber. Um, and if you have an allergy to corn, God bless you, you know? You sh whatever, just don't take the product. You don't need to insult the person Tell them that they're a sellout. Tell them that, that I'm a sellout. Like I, somebody messaged me, uh, my old keto group where I got tired of dealing with and um, because of all the negativity and stuff. So when I left, they, everybody threw saying, oh, I was just Mr. Negative. Okay, say what you want. Well, the one guy that was on our group and was on their group as well and he was he decided to make another comment that I was a sellout along with Jimmy Moore because of this article. And it's just ridiculous. I'm not making any money on it. I just like the fact that Jimmy Moore is commenting on my page. I, you know, um, for him to take the time out and post onto our page, I think it's good. I think it helps people. Any. I don't mind if you, if you have multiple groups that you belong to. I'm not one of those people that say you need to only belong to one group and it has to be mine or you can just get out. I don't believe in that. I believe that you're gonna learn a little bit from this group, a little bit from that group. You're gonna learn a little bit from this keto person, from that keto person. And you're gonna have to be the person that's smart enough to say, I could use this, I could use that. I don't need this and I don't need that. Make it so that the ketogenic diet works for you. I'm not going to tell you that this is the only way to do keto. It just doesn't, I don't see it that way. Um, like I was telling people when, when, I, when I commented, I don't expect people to do the keto the way I do it. My wife doesn't do the keto the way I do it. She, she does keto half cocked and, you know, like when she wants to eat something with sugar and carbs, she eats something with sugar and carbs. But... She doesn't have the insulin issue that I have. So when I know that my insulin resistance is bad and that my weight gain is very easily, you know, achieved when I eat something bad, I have to watch myself. Yeah, your keto, my keto. Yeah. Um, so I realize that I cannot have carbohydrates. I cannot have sugars. She can. Some of my other friends, they can. Some of them, they can't. They don't realize it yet, but they can't. Um, right. And, and the fact, you know, if, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know. Um, I like to think that I'm trying to teach you guys the right way. Um, you know, there is a core to keto. There's a general um, way of doing keto. And, and I, I like to think that I, I show that. And I, and I teach that and I, sh and I give examples and I do my research on that, like, um, uh, like this. Here, let's go off on another tangent real quick. Obesity. I get a lot of uh, people telling me that the ketogenic diet doesn't work because um, obesity is just basically, um, you know, it's, it's America. It's not America. China, here it is. All right, globalization, China, is one-fifth of the population of the world and 20% of them are obese. They like, people like to say, oh, China's been eating all these carbohydrates for years and blah, blah, blah. Well, the problem is, is that they're getting worse, okay? They have more children that are obese in China than any other country in the world. Now, granted, they have the largest population of, of people, but to have more children than anybody in the world doesn't mean doesn't prove that rice is actually okay for you to eat. It's just not. Um, 
here's here's one of the other problems is that more people in America are obese than they are just being overweight. Like there's a percentage of people that are overweight and there's a percentage of people that are obese and overweight. And it's just awful. So you would think that there would be healthy, ob overweight, obese, except it's overweight and then obese is just, like you're either, I don't know, it's just awful. It's, it's over 50% of our population, I think it's even over 60%, is either overweight or obese. So how could people think, shh, shh, I hear you, pal, I hear you. Yeah, there he goes, he's, he's turned on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my wife also asked me yesterday about that uh, study. Um, So if I don't talk, he doesn't whistle. He's looking at me though. Uh, I know I, I know I'm all over the bird, all over the bird, all over the place with my with my uh, thinking. But all my all my tangents and all my topics and everything basically comes back to how to eat properly, how how everything works. So yeah, you could say that I, I randomly talk about random things and I get this and I get that. I, I just think that, that keto is more than just cutting carbs. You have to understand why you're doing it. You have to, once you understand it, you can make it work. If you're thinking that cutting calories is going to make it work, it's not. Cutting calories is the wrong way of doing it. It's already been failed. It's a failed theory. Um, some people out there, they try to make a joke about it that calories don't matter. Okay, how about this? Take this for instance. If I eat 1,500 calories worth of baked goods like donuts and cupcakes and um, candy, 1,500 calories, okay? And then I eat 2,000 or I could eat two, am I, or somebody else could eat 2,000 calories of a ketogenic diet every day. Who's going to lose weight? If it's about calories, then that 1,500 day calories of candy and, 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 and baked goods should lose more because if it's only about the calories and hormones only have a little bit of a response, then he's beating up the toy in his, in his thing. He's beating it up. That's good. He's preoccupied. Um, so if it's about calories, then that 1,500 calorie of whatever the heck they're eating, they'll lose weight. And it's not true. If you eat 1,500 calories worth of donuts and cupcakes and candy, you're going to gain weight. You eat 2,000 calories of ketogenic diet and high fat, low carb, you're going to lose weight. So for people to think that calories are, gonna, are, are what matter on a ketogenic diet, it's just they, they're not using the, the entire science behind a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet is basically about hormone. It's not about calories. It's about hormones. So everything your body does is based on hormones. So why on earth would you not think that hormones are based are, are, are what control our weight in and our weight out. It's not about calories, okay? Um, so, anyway, let's open this up to questions, concerns, comments. Anybody have any questions? Um, it could, we could talk about exercise, since that's my field of study. We could talk about nutrition, which that was part of my studies. We can uh, talk about anything you want. We could talk about um, the weather and sports, which I love all the other things too. So anybody, anybody got any comments? I got 15 people there. I got eight thumbs up. So some people are out there. I learned from all. So do I. I, I actually, I watch so many different channels that I, I, and I like them. I like all the different ones. Uh, Redeem, Gonzo, because of you, all of these videos you made, this grandma lost 75 pounds, and I'm looking really good for for a soon-to-be great-grandma, and love you forever for this. You're welcome, Redeem. That's beauty, too. Black beauty. I don't, I haven't seen that black beauty part in a while. Where is that profile at? Linda says she loves the birds. Someone... 
Ghost said, uh, I love Jimmy, and he has helped a lot of people, and he really has. I can't have anything sweet tasting spikes me. Absolutely, it's what happens. Yeah. Get Fit Trucker says, I am down 25 pounds in my BS uh, blood sugar, not his, and not his other BS, stays around 78. That's good. These are all great testimonials. Um, I ate some things that I probably shouldn't have ate in New York. A little bit. But I probably walked like a lot. So I was, I didn't eat a lot of fats. I didn't have access to a lot of fats. So I ate some carbs. Some. I thought I was going to be out of ketosis. I came home, my blood sugar was 87. And my, um, my ketones were 1.8. So um, for me, that was a testimonial that, that uh, I am definitely fat adapted. Even if I eat some carbohydrates, I don't have the risk of, of bumping out of ketosis and bumping my sugars really high. My body has now become, uh, my insulin has become stronger while doing the ketogenic diet. My, my body has adapted to utilizing fat for my energy. So I, you know, I, I think I did really well. I think I did. Uh, deadly beauty. Oh, deadly beauty. That's what it was. Got rid of it over women complaining about my name. So I changed my name to redeemed. Oh. What else we got? Um, you got healthy and fat adapted. You go, boy. Yep, I did. Um, I'm still not where I want to be, which people use that against me. I like, I want to hear the song, I want to be rich. No. It's my echo talking to me. So, um, yeah, when you start to explain the ketogenic diet and then people just say, well, you know, the advice coming from somebody that's not ripped and shredded doesn't make any sense. Well, your doctors aren't ripped and shredded and they're telling you how to eat and they're telling you what to, you know, I'm sure they have heart disease and they, have, they get cancer, but they're telling you how to eat, how to eat and how to, how to prevent cancer and how to prevent heart disease. And yet there they are. So why do we, why do we accept that what they do? We, we, we don't care what they look like. We just accept them for what they know, okay? So why can you not accept what somebody knows, but you have to say, well, you, you, you have to look the part. I get it. Um, if you saw where I came from, you'd understand that there's a, a, a continual progress, okay? I'm not in I'm not in a hurry to get shredded or you know I'm not lifting heavy anymore I'm f almost 50 years old I'm just my body's broken I'm tired <laughs> I'm wore out I don't want to have to work out um, seven days a week and lift weights like continuous and and kill myself in the gym all the time just to look healthy and feel healthy because when I was lifting weights I was I was tired. It wore me out. It would wear me out. Um, I looked better, but I didn't feel better. I feel better now with a little bit of this fat on me and still. And, you know, maybe I'm not as jacked as I used to be or, or, uh, or anything like that. But I still feel better. I, 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 you know, granted, I only have, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into everything. But you guys know. What else we got? Uh, ignore mean people. They complain about everything. Uh, be happy. Be good to one another. That's, that's great advice. It's great, great, great advice. Anybody got any questions? Any comments? Any concerns? I got 15 people here. Somebody's got to ask a question. How's everybody's day going? What are we doing today? What's on the agenda? We got cloudy weather today here. Not so nice looking. 
My bird's finally silent. Now I could actually talk. Nobody wants to talk. Only Redeem is talking. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Um, I guess that's a good time to end the show. It's been 35 minutes. I appreciate everybody for hanging out. Um, I hope understanding the calories makes more sense. That... It's not about reducing your calories. If you reduce your calories, all you're going to do is reduce the output of calories. So you're just going to decrease your metabolism by cutting calories. It's just what happens. You know, that's it. It's just what happens. Oh, UCSF learned my sister has been on, on as vent. Heading to UCSF. What is UCSF? Learned my sister has been on as a vent. Not sure what that is. I hope it's something good. Um, got me some smoked turkey legs. Oh yeah, Melissa, you're at. You got that Renaissance thing going on. Um, I'm giving others a chance. Yeah, there you go. I see that. I'll watch the reply. Gotta fly. Okay, K K Katie. See you later. Uh, your information is some of the best and most honest out there. Your before and after pictures are amazing. Thank you, Redeem. I appreciate that. A ventilator. That's what I thought that meant. Sorry to hear that. Your sister's on a ventilator? Good luck. Good luck, Katie. I know you just went from a, a high to a low now, huh? Um, you were at a... I saw your pictures. You, you look like you were having an awesome time at a wedding. Um... I'm sorry. Hang in there, kid. I'll be thinking about you. Anyway, um, oh, someone else mentioned them yesterday. All right. Um, hey, Emmanuel. How are you, sir? I'm just getting ready to come off of this live. We were starting to die out. Um, Look at all this gray here. I didn't have all this gray here when I started these videos. I know I didn't have them. Yeah, you just missed it. Uh, it was a pretty good one. It was about uh, calories, of course, which I'm pretty adamant about. Um, but throw a like, throw a thumbs up on here, everybody, if, if on your way out. I appreciate it. If you if you thought it was worthy, if you didn't, sorry. Uh, Solly, my live cook along. After the fact, good one. Thanks, Manuel. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to try to implement more harder meals, more chicken meals. I've got these, uh, uh, like, I want to do more, like, um, keto bread, keto burgers. Like, I love burgers, so I want to make, make better burgers. Um, show you what I do to make a better burger. Um, I, I want to make some quesadillas out of uh, lo very low-carb um, uh, uh, bread and then I can I take these quesadillas and I fold them into triangles fold them it's really neat um, found a lovely interview by John's widow and nothing wrong with simple it's very simple um, yeah so uh, I made some of these tortillas the other day for my wife and she liked them. She wanted me to uh, make them for her dad when we were down and visiting. And I just didn't want to do all that. Um, because some people, I, as much as I want to, to really push the ketogenic diet on to people that need it, I know that's, that the more you push, the more people resist. So I just leave it the way it is. Plus, again, you know, I don't want to get into the point where they constantly, they look at you and they go, oh yeah, it's really working for you. And I, I just don't like it. Keto Connects recipe. Um, I have to check out Keto Connects recipe. I, it's probably very similar. Most of these recipes that are out there um, aren't like groundbreaking. There's already been somebody that has these out in a cookbook somewhere. And I have probably 
10 cookbooks from keto, if not more. So there's a lot of proven recipes out there. Okay. I like the mozzarella and almond flour tortillas. That does sound good. My wife was like, oh, these, those uh, 90 second breads I made yesterday on the video. She was like, oh, these could be like pancakes too. I was like, there's actually a, a good way of making pancakes. It's a little different. They're not as bready as those things. Yeah, they, they tend to use a lot of sweetener, but and well, the problem I have with a lot using a lot of sweetener um, is the fact that is that you're going to spike that that urge to eat sugar, and it's it could make somebody just fall off the wagon. I don't want anybody falling off the wagon, so I don't want to force you know makes somebody's um cravings for sugar just wake up all of a sudden and then they just they they jump off and they go kill uh, uh, um an ice cream cake or something like that uh those 90 second breads were lifesavers when i first started keto don't need them as much anymore yeah i i get they are they're they are good for beginners yeah they can be but i also I'm not a beginner, and I don't mind it every now and then. Um, but I wasn't a big keto fire in the beginning either. And a keto fi keto fine means you're taking a recipe that you used to eat when you were overeating carbs and stuff like that, and you've converted it into some sort of keto esque kind of recipe. And now you could still eat it, but it, now it's keto. Okay. So um, that's keto fine. And Keto Connect is all about keto fine. So a lot of people uh, like to be able to eat the things they used to eat. And that's how, that's why Keto Connect is so popular. But is it, do they really follow the ketogenic diet like a lot of the other uh, YouTubers out there? No, no. They're, they're kind of, they're like um, like some of the other ones out there. Now, they're, they're, it's not bad, not at all. They, they do great reviews on products. They're honest. They're very knowledgeable. Um, they do a lot of their working out. Uh, but they do things in like, and, and they, they, they're like their own little test subjects. And, they, and they, they're very informative and they're very entertaining. And I watch them. I watch, I like them. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, just not. Make one with only cauliflower recipes. That's a, that's not a bad idea. Because um, there is like cauliflower rice, cauliflower mashed potatoes, cauliflower um, um, pizza. Gosh, there's lots of little things. I even uh, had these cauliflower breadsticks. Those were actually pretty good, too. What are you doing, Barney? Oh, he's tearing apart his little strings. Cauliflower mac and cheese? Really? Come on. Come on, Manuel. I never heard of that one. Is there really? Uh, I love it, too, but thinking of in memory rather than ghost any suggestions what are we talking about what did i miss i missed something what did i miss what did i miss um cauliflower potatoes i suck at collie um cauliflower like the cauliflower mashed potatoes Look for twice baked keto mac and cheese. That sounds pretty cool. Um, cauliflower mashed potatoes. That's just basically you're taking those um, cauliflower florets down to like you boil them down and you're mushing them down into like a, like mashed potatoes, and then you add the garlic and butter and a little bit of cheese and uh, it tastes literally like mashed potatoes. 
a little bit of cauliflower, but it tastes more like mashed potatoes. And it's not as, as firm. It's a little more flat and ish, but because there's a lot more water in, in uh, cauliflower than there are in potatoes. So I guess if you drain it somehow and you're able to fluff it up a little bit somehow, it might be more like mashed potatoes, but it's not exactly like. Uh, Redeem says, I did hear uh, there is a new keto cheese out there. Um, I know that I've had cheese through um, Kerry Gold. That cheese is really good. But here's my problem with cheese is that I tend to overeat the cheese still. I just... Cheese is, is it's just... Cheese is good, but it doesn't take much to, to fill you up. And then for you not to realize how soon you are full, you could end up eating too much cheese. So I guess if you just restricted your amount to eat and then you waited 20 or 30 minutes till your brain could realize that you're full, I guess you could, you could do it that way. You should try Anthony's powdered cheese. Anthony's powdered cheese. I have some sort of, somebody's powdered cheese in there. Maybe I will have to try that. Um, I think my next one is going to be like uh, stuffed chicken breast. I think that's going to be my next meal that I make. And it, it's going to be this week. So uh, it might even be tomorrow. Stuffed chicken breast tomorrow. That would be awesome. Um, and they'll be stuffed with like uh, cream cheese and um, wrapped in bacon. It's going to be good. Cream cheese and chives. Yep. So anyway. Um, Today is Sunday, right? Echo. Echo, what is today? It's Sunday, August 19th. Sunday, August 19th. Yeah, so it's 81918 today. 81918. Yeah, just like, yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks for everybody for listening. I appreciate y'all. I really do. And I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow. I'll be doing another cooking thing tomorrow. Um, I may stream it. I was thinking about this. Let me run this by you guys real quick. Since you guys are the ones that have to watch it. I was going to take one camera and point it down at the food while I make it. And that might be on, say, like Facebook. And then the other camera will be over here that will watch the whole process, including me talking and everything else. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. So if you have the ability to watch both Facebook and YouTube at the same time, you'd be able to see like the, the close-up view of the dish being done. And then the other one, you'd see me talking while I'm doing the dish. But not as detailed, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how that would work out. I don't know that anybody's ever really done it that way, but I guess I'm sure there's there's some people that have done it. Any suggestions on that? Any yay or nay or think about it first. Don't just jump in and say yeah. Uh, strap a camera to your chest. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, can you split screen with yourself? No. No. I love the way you did uh, them the other day. The whole process is best. Thanks. I think so, too. I like it. Um, yeah. Try not to get too technical, I guess. That maybe, maybe down the road I'll do one or two that way. But I think seeing it... I do, too. I like, I like seeing a person as they cook. Um, uh, my phone will do it just like to figure it out. Oh, gosh. I'm up to 50 minutes already. This hat right here came from um, the town I used to live in when I lived in North Carolina. It was um, Emerald Isle, North Carolina. 
It's uh, is when I I lived there during Hurricane Bob, back in uh, early '90s. But we went and visited that area, and I picked up the hat. It's a weird hat. Regime, I got rid of my cell phone and my Facebook. Ouch. That sucks. You gotta keep a cell phone. All right, guys. It's 50 minutes. I seem depressed. It's okay. Cheer up. Thank you for getting this well out of, out of there. Our way of eating out there. You're, you're welcome. I'm not depressed. I just don't know what else to talk about. I don't, I'm just kind of trying to listen to you guys and and uh and talk i'm not depressed i'm just this is me in my mellow mode i'm mellow right now i had my breakfast probably three four hours ago four hours ago i'm just chilling it's one of those lazy sundays that's it it's just working for me I'm in kind of that um, thinking out loud mode too. So I'm trying to think what kind of uh, foods to make. Picking your brains, see what you guys think. That's all. Danny says, um, how much have you gained back since the fast? I gained back 7.2 pounds as of yesterday. 7.2. So I lost basically like 23 pounds. But uh, that weight is coming back down. It, it's going to hit that 30 again, and then it'll go beyond that 30, I think. Uh, Gonzo, check out my video I made for my in-laws and friends and how to make keto coffee. Where's it at, Manuel? I'll go check that out. I ate carbs today. No regrets. Well, except my bowels. Oh, keto endurance. Keto endurance said I ate carbs today. Like I said, I, uh, keto endurance. I was here. I was talking that I ate carbs the, uh, the other day. And I thought my, um, my stomach would be messed up. I thought my, I'd be out of ketosis. I thought my sugar would be high. And none of that happened. So I've been so fat adapted for so long that um, my body now, like if I just eat a little bit of carbohydrates, it doesn't really seem to spike it like it used to. It didn't take many carbs or many sugars for my body to go crazy and, and, and whatnot. Uh, Want to be better. I'm late to the party. Are you doing carnivore? No, no. I decided not to do carnivore. Uh, not that it's bad for you, it's that it's not, mm, it's not ideal for me. It's not ideal for a lot of people because unless you're eating a lot of organ meats, it's not really the way carnivore was supposed to be done. If you're just eating hamburger and you're just eating steak and you're just eating bacon and eggs, you're going to have somewhat of the benefits from the carnivore diet, but the real benefits come from when you eat the organ meats um, and the blood and the kidneys and the stomach and the brains and the heart and stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm not into that stuff. Um, no. Yeah. If you eat the animal from nose to tail, like he said, yeah. And I like vegetables. I just like my, I like my salads. I had a salad last night. Uh, I did carnivore a week. I missed veggies too much. Same here, Paleo Barbie. I, I was the same way. Yeah, um, that's right. If you're not a fan of liver, right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not a fan of liver. I just don't like it. I tried it a couple different ways and they say, oh, let it sit in milk or let it sit in butter or let it sit this way and then just fry it up and it's just like this. I'm not a big red steak eater either. I just, I kind of like hamburger, but I'm not a big, I don't like sirloin or prime rib or, or T-bone. I'm just not a big 
person like that. The longer you do keto, it becomes harder to get kicked off of the, out of ketosis. And it's easier to get back into. That's very true, Spivey. Um, a lot of people, like, that, that's, ba that's basically being so fat adapted that carbohydrates just don't mess with you. Okay? Um, yeah, that's right. And you're not a fan of liver. I am not a fan of liver. Not. You know, it's not that I haven't tried it. I've tried salmon a couple different ways. Not a fan of salmon. Can't do it. I know some people just love salmon and they can stick to it. Not me. Can't do it. We call them innards. Yeah, you can call them whatever you want. Chitlins that, and chickens, I guess they call them chitlins or I don't know. Um, Manuel says, I grew up eating liver. Didn't Don't mind it. Yeah, well, we had liver as a kid too and I hated it. We had prime rib as a kid and I hated it. We had steaks sometimes. Hated it. Just hated it. Uh, people say, oh, it's just on the, uh, on the way that you, you prepare it. That's not true. I've tried it. I don't like it. My keto cauliflower cheese makes grown-up men weep. Ah, well then share the recipe with me, ghost, so I could try to make it. Um, I had to eat salmon until I got used to it. Don't like it at first. Didn't like it at first. Really? Now see, I bought tilapia because I don't like fish at all. I don't like fish. I just don't. So my, my wife was like, here, well, let's try tilapia because it's not as fishy fish as some of the other ones. Okay. Because I wanted to become healthy. I wanted to get my omegas in and I want to get that, you know, the fish in. The tilapia sat in the freezer for six months to a year. And by that time, it probably wasn't any good to eat anyway. So we threw it out. If you don't like fish, you should try halibut or Chilean sea bass. Hmm. I heard halibut. I never heard of Chilean sea bass. Cod is hard to handle. Is hard. Is all I handle. Cod is. Okay. I can't stand fish either, Gonzo. Um, it just isn't good for me. The smell alone kills me. Yeah, same here. I love tuna. I can eat tuna. And albacore, I guess. Whatever they call it. I can't stand fish uh, let me see. Did you see the salmon Nancy made the other day? Looks so good. Not to me. You know, I'm sorry, but mm -mm. tilapia is farm raised using chicken poo to feed it. Well, that's nice to know, Spive. That's nice. <laughs> it's probably very true, but ugh, wouldn't want to eat that. No, sir. Not me. No. I guess I will just continue to take my cod liver oil like I do basically on a daily basis. I get my omegas that way through the through actual cod liver oil. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. So you guys have stuck with me. I've been trying to hang up on this, like hang up the phone here for half an hour. Now you guys keep talking and then get my interest back. Uh, you cannot pay me to eat tilapia. Cod liver oil is very good. I, I agree. I love it. I'm okay with it. Uh, I could actually do more than I do. It doesn't... Uh, I got mercury-free capsules. That's pretty good. All right. Want to be better? We will see you later. Thanks for stopping in. Vicky says she loves trout and salmon. I just wish I did because so many people seem to like it. Like, I've never eaten lobster or crab legs. Never. I could eat, I could eat um, shrimp and I've eaten oysters and I've eaten clam, but I've never had crab legs and I've never had a lobster. Been around it all. Krill oil, krill oil is also good, yeah. Yep. Blue whales love krill. They eat hundreds and thousands and billions of them. How did you start the YouTube channel? Um, I want to I wanna start one. It's hard, Melissa, I'm telling you. Basically, all you got to do, you go in, you create an account, and then you push that live button, and you start to talk. And maybe somebody will watch your first video. Maybe they won't. But the more you continue to talk and try to stick with one general thing. 
so many people will come out with, uh, they'll talk about their kids in one video and they'll show their kids playing or something. And then they'll show them hiking on a next video. And then they'll show them cooking on a next video. I, I guess that could be like the family life. Depends on what you want to make your, your video about. But if you want to make it about keto, you got to stick to pretty much keto and, and, and everything that surrounds keto. That's not always easy thing to do. You have to come up with a lot of different ideas, a lot of different videos. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of self-promoting. Um, and there's no reward as far as monetary. There's no, it's like, I've been doing this now for a long time. And I think I've made $50. That's about it. It's not much. Um, but if you're going to do it for the money, it's then, then there's many other things you can do that can make money at. This I do because I like helping people do learn keto. I like helping people understand keto because um, I found that it worked for me and I'm, I try to help people so that it works for them. That's all. My whole idea is to help people. If, you know, I, I started that Patreon account because I literally make more. I'll probably make more on that Patreon account than I have in seven or eight months of keto, nine months of, or not of keto, of uh, YouTube. YouTube just doesn't, there isn't a lot of money out there. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, if you start a, a keto channel, I will, I will subscribe. So you'll have at least one subscriber. I'm sure some of these other people would subscribe. It's just another way of seeing how somebody does keto. It's basically, you just want people to Look into the way you do keto, and if they like the way you do keto, you'll get subscribers. I have 3,400 subscribers. Um, according to YouTube, you need to have 1,000 subscribers, and you need to have 400,000 minutes of people watching your video in less than a year. So in the first six months, first three months, I had that already done. But it took them six to seven months to monetize me, which means they start to pay you to advertise on your channel. And then, honestly, that is less than like $20 a month. So there isn't, it's not like you're making a lot of money. So if you just like to make videos, that's fine. But then now the video editing people are charging to edit videos, like, to, to use their um, their apps, they're charging you by the month sometimes. So there goes that twenty dollars gone. Um, yeah. So there's definitely no profit in it. And people got mad at me for for opening that that Patreon account. And it's just a, an account that that I started. That if you can afford a dollar, I appreciate it. Honestly, I do or $2 or $5. And like I said, with that Patreon account, I'm giving away some of my PTSD awareness uh, ribbons, um, which cost me almost $5 or more to make and ship. So um, I have to get some of those sent out, by the way, some, to some of my Patreon people. But um, for me to ask just a, for a dollar or two, it's not like, it helps. It honestly does help. And, and you know, to, when you're on a budget, I guess if I was a self-made millionaire, it wouldn't bother me to just spend and spend, you know, but it's not, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, I'm only asking for a little bit here and there. Whatever somebody could help with, that's it. And the Patreon account is going gonzo, whatever it is. I don't even know it offhand. But if you look, if you go to Patreon and you look up Going Gonzo, I'm sure you can find me if you really want to. Um, there's a couple of people that have Patreon accounts out there. And uh, I appreciate every dollar that people can donate. It's, it's very appreciative. All right, guys. I have gone way too long. I have bored you guys. Some people thought I was depressed. That's sad. That's scary. <laughs> I'm not depressed. I'm just chilled out right now. I'm in mellow mode. I'm in chill mode. But um, I'm going to go do something. I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm going to do today. It's Sunday. My wife went to church with my niece. I decided to do a live with you guys. Because um, I haven't done too many lives lately. But, all right. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'll try to do a live with the food tomorrow because I will be uh, alone again tomorrow. So I might as well make dinner, right? All right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you all soon. Have a great Sunday. Have a great end of your weekend. Uh, and have a great day at work tomorrow if you, for those of you going back to work tomorrow. Bye.